Hey there, welcome to the REI Conversion Podcast, where each episode we discuss strategies and digital tools to help you launch, automate, and scale your real estate investing business. Learn how to run your investing business remotely, find out ways to automate your business to better utilize your time, and learn what other successful investors are implementing so you can get to the next step closer to your investing goals. And I'm your host and founder of REI Conversion, Jesse Kwong. Hey, how's it going? It's Jesse here from the REI Conversion Podcast. I've got a special guest here. Actually, he is a returning guest, uh, Jaron Barnes. Um, you may have known him over from RE Tipster. He's on the podcast with Seth and has worked on the blog as well. And if you haven't checked out his awesome review and uh, how he uses REI Pebble, make sure you have it over to retipster.com slash pebble dash review. Anyways, um, on this episode, Jaron is going to dive about how he applies really sort of the mindset shift of what we're calling profit first. Uh, if you didn't remember, uh, I think it was back in episode number 60, I had uh, David Richter there talk about profit first for real estate investing. Um, so actually, Jaron was the one who put, put me on to him. So he's going to be sharing how he uses profit first specifically for his land business. And you're going to get some really, really practical hands-on gems in this episode. So don't miss out. Not only that, make sure you hang out right up until the end of this episode. It is really important because both Jaron and I are going to be making an announcement. Enjoy this episode. I'm sure you're going to get tons of value out of this one. And uh, enjoy. Cheers. Hey, how's it going? It's Jesse here from the REI Conversion Podcast. I've got a special guest. Many of you may already know who he is. Jaron, how are you doing? I'm good, man. It's an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. It's always a always a, a pleasure to have you on the show. Jaron is one of those guys that will dive deep, will explore everything and share it with everybody. And this is what this podcast is all about. Um, We're going to be talking about something very specific. And in fact, um, a few episodes ago, uh, we had a guest. His name is David. uh, And he was the author of the book. uh, Oh, my gosh. Profit First for Real Estate Investing. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, And actually, Jaron put me on uh, onto him. And um, because Jaron is applying that to his business. And it's funny because... I hear a lot of people who are running their land investing business, but really they're just rolling everything back into the business without any thoughts to give themselves a profit. And at the end of the day, that is what, what why we're doing this. Um, but before I dive into that, um, Jaron, you're doing good? Yeah, man. I'm doing great. I'm in Florida. I I really want to live in Florida. I'm not <laughs> going to for the next few years, it looks like, but... I, the minute I can get down here, I'm going to get down here. That's awesome. Well, yeah. you're lucky. I'm up here in the Pacific Northwest and it's gray and it's getting cold again. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's talk about this. Can you tell us, you know, we've had this episode in the past before, but can you tell us essentially in a quick summary, what what is Profit First to you? Yeah, man. So Profit First is really a a management system for finances. It's a layman's version of accounting, I would say, or maybe not even layman's version. It's like a a practical business, like rubber meets the road kind of accounting. Um, so most people who are trained in traditional accounting, they don't really like profit first, and because it, it just it kind of conflicts with their mode of thinking. But for people who are not like you know, Mike Michalowicz in the original Profit First book says. Which is a book, by the way. He's the guy that like coined the whole term "profit first." Michael yes. Callowitz is a solid guy, um, but you know he says like accountants are like Spocks. They're like you know just numbers and like not non emotional creatures. But we are. <laughs> so for us normal yes. people, we need a, a system that is simple, uh, especially entrepreneurs that are super busy. We need something that is simple, reliable, and. Uh, profit first really is all of the above. I love what you said earlier, Jesse, and I kind of want to circle back to that because I feel you mentioned um, something to the effect of like the whole point of why we're doing what we're doing is to make a profit. And a lot of people just roll everything they make back into the business. And that was a big lesson that I had to learn like years into my land business. So I was definitely that guy. Um, I was literally, I mean, I would have, you know, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars come into my account and somehow it would just like disappear. And I'm like scratching my head. Like I thought 
the, I'm doing more deals. Why is my number of money not going up or sustaining up anyway? And uh, I really feel like the other side of the coin of success is managing money. We all typically, uh, listeners of this podcast, um, make our money by flipping land. That's the, yep. the means that we generate revenue, but it's what we do with, with that revenue that really uh, makes a big impact on our lifestyle and our gener- like whatever you want to spend your money on, right? Whatever you value. So, Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you know, taking the concept from uh, profit first, you know, how have you practically implemented this into your business? What, like, what is this all about? Like, what, what, you're, you're saying it's sort of a layman's term of accounting. Uh, and, and a lot of us as entrepreneurs, now I can't say everybody, but someone like myself, you know, I like to just get stay busy. Um, but how, how do you implement this? What is this strategy all about? Yeah, man. So it's really about, I would say, budgeting without budgeting because I hate budgeting. Like budgeting yeah. feels like a straight jacket and it does not feel like financial freedom. Uh, it feels like financial <laughs> freedom to me. So, uh, so it's true. not, it's not good. So it's a way to kind of trick your brain into budgeting without having to, you know, count every penny. What the main, I guess, uh, cornerstone of the system is having multiple bank accounts that serve different functions within your business. Yes. So generally speaking, you, you're looking at um, an income account, a profit account, an owner's comp account, a tax account, and then an OPEX account. Um, so the premise of profit first is that profit actually needs to be taken first. Um, so whenever revenue comes into your business, what traditional accounting says is that profit is um, expenses uh, revenue minus money. revenue equals profit. And that's not what profit first teaches. It's the opposite. Uh, what it is, is it's profit revenue minus profit equals your operating expenses, like what you have mm-hmm. to actually run your business. And being intentional about like, you're almost automating profitability. From day one, when you have this system, any dollar that comes in, a certain percentage of it's going to go into an account called profit that is a savings account, typically at a different bank than you normally bank, hide it, hid it away so that you never see it. And then once a quarter, you uh, you pay yourself like a quarterly bonus. Yes. And then you let's, have let's like go over profit the- comp and a bunch of other details. So get the Let's book. go over the accounts <laughs> that, that you just, uh, just you mentioned. You yeah. said income, uh, profit. What was the other... Yeah, so it's uh, income, profit, owner's compensation, taxes, and then operating expenses. Okay. And you can have as many accounts as you need. So like most real estate investors would have a OPM account. I have an OPM account where if for whatever reason I'm holding investors' funds or whatever from a due diligence uh, thing, um, right. you know, I, direct mail, you could delineate direct mail costs from operating costs because – depending on where you're at, what stage you're at in your, the development of your business, you could be in yep. a, a situation. I typically teach coaching students in the land business, like where look at it like two different hats or two different buckets. There's the monthly costs and then there's acquisition costs and direct mail costs. Because when you're first getting started, you don't actually have to commit to doing mail every single month. Um, I made that mistake. I was like, I'm going to be a real business, you know, and I like way overextended myself um, yeah. when I first got started because I was just like going too aggressive. But mm-hmm. you can run your business direct mail campaign to direct mail campaign, meaning you send out a campaign, work all the leads, work all the deals until you actually get money back in the bank. And then when you have a big lump sum of money, then you yeah. allocate it to the different functions of your business, which are represented by each account. So everything comes into that income account. That's kind of like a, a serving tray for the other accounts. Yes. Right. Right. Now, <clears throat> I mean, specifically for land investors, because, you know, majority of the, the listeners here are, uh, you know, land flippers, land investors. <clears throat> do you do anything different specifically for land? I mean, you mentioned direct mailing. Is there an account for direct mailing or marketing? Um, do you have anything set up just for that? So I don't personally, because the way that I've structured my business is it's a pretty sweet situation. I use land 
funders, so like uh, people who do private money loans um, or funding, depending on how you structure it. And yeah. um, the way that I have it structured is I'll um, be exclusive to one investor per state, um, but we do they pay for direct mail and acquisition costs, and then we do a 50-50 split afterwards. So it's a cool situation because they don't do any work. I do all the work, yes. but I don't have any like any capital. hardcore capital in, involved. Right. I have, I mean, our monthly expenses as uh, land investors are are kind of like ridiculously low when you cut out direct mail and and uh, acquisitions. Sure. It's like a thousand bucks a month, maybe if you're like really. <laughs> I, I always say that land <laughs> land is one of those business models out there with like the least amount Cost. of barrier to entry. I find it's yeah. it's ridiculous, but. Okay, cool. So, so you you operate a little bit differently. You know, you use you're using funders, and you might have some different accounts uh, I will set say, up. But I mean, I will say though, um, not to interrupt you, but um, I kind of got sidetracked no, no. there, and I didn't answer your question. One of the things that I can say that is unique, kind of like a a, um, a a pivot from the traditional profit first model that I implement is um, the allocation rhythms. So in the book. The way that the um, author, Mike Michalowicz, says you should um, essentially run the allocations or the dividing of whatever's in the income account to the other allotted accounts yeah. that you've set up, um, you should do that. I have it written down because I always forget. Uh, every 10th and 25th of the month is what he suggests. Okay. Um, okay. And for most businesses, that makes sense because you have a big influx of bills at the end of the month and um right at the beginning of the month so you wait till the you know like the the end portion pay everything on the 10th on the, yeah. on the 25th it's a good rhythm us I land know. investors we can't do that because well some of us can when we have scaled and we have um like enough volume and enough if you have monthly sales or uh, multiple monthly sales a month then you're yeah. you can do it that way but most investors don't operate that way. It's normally, hey, I got a big influx of uh, inventory, and then I'm mm. waiting between a month to six months, maybe up to a year to sell the property, right? So right. Uh, the way that I run allocations is I, I run it on a um, deal by deal basis. So whenever we sell a property, then we do the allocation. Um, so it's something that is um, tied specifically to the event of of uh, successfully closing on a sale um, versus gotcha. doing it every single month. So <clears throat> just to repeat that, and I, I think this is really key here to what you do, your allocation, is it actually set on the 10th and the 25th or is it dependent on the sale of a property? Yeah, so I so in real estate, I, I've i pivoted away from the 10th and the 25th. I don't commit to that at all. Oh, gotcha. I, do, okay. I, I do allocations whenever we sell a property. Got you. And I think you kind of have to do it. Most investors will have to do it that way. Unless you do terms, like terms guys have more cash flow that's easier to manage. So So the more consistency, obviously, the more volume, the more consistent, then you can probably set some sort of rhythm if if you're doing more of one, not one offs, but in more infrequent um, deals, then you're probably doing something whenever a, a deal actually gets done. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. Got you. Now let's dive into a little bit more of the specifics. Um, do you have any sort of bank accounts you can recommend? I know you do a lot of digging with these things. I mean, in the past, me, you talked about credit card processors and, and banks, and uh, you always yeah. seem to be able to find the good ones. Can you sort of do make any recommendation, recommendations here? Yeah. So I don't know what it is. I, like, I am diagnosed ADHD. I was told that I was a like an extreme case of ADHD when I was a kid. And um, yeah. I normally don't talk much about it, but um, they say that that is something um, pretty common in people that are ADHD um, because when it comes to focusing on things that they don't care about, they perform yeah. suboptimal to like the uh-huh. standard quota. But if there's something that they just, for whatever reason, catch an interest in, they can hyper-focus and hyper-research. And I, I just get these waves of inspiration, man, where I just will do stupid amounts of research on like very <laughs> obscure things that no one else care, cares about. And this was one of the things. I actually prepared an entire blog post, like, and I did a, a stupid amount of 
hours dedicated to this thing where I was calling up banks and asking them, hey, do you qualify as a profit first bank based on this criteria? Because there's a few things that that Mike McCallowitz says um, is required for it to be a profit first bank fee free. Um, you have to um, be able to have as many accounts as mm. um, at least a minimum of 10, but you mm. try to find if you can have unlimited amount of, of accounts. Um, yeah. All and there's a couple other things, but I'm not remembering them at the moment. But sure. um, I have I had it all written out, and then I was literally like doing research, and I found like the five most authentically true profit first banks in existence, probably. Um, wow. So the answer to your question, the yes. from hours and hours of research, uh, Mercury Bank, Mercury.com um, okay. is an online bank now. If you're somebody who does a lot of like cashier's checks and stuff, online banks mm. probably aren't going to be your your best bet. You probably want to go somewhere local. Um, I don't. I always do wire stuff. I'm going through like title. So um, mm-hmm. I, it's totally fine for me to, to have an online-based bank. But what's really cool about these guys, if you're, I think, you know, don't strong army, but I think you, you don't have to be um, location dependent. So I don't think that you have to be in the United States potentially. Um, wow. so that might be something okay. you ha- you should look into. Um, yeah. cause I, you know, I have a, I live in Indiana. I have a mailing address that's in North Carolina for my Florida based business. And then I live in right. Indiana, like I, you know, I live in Indiana, so it's all that's convoluted. Right. It was really hard for me to land a, a local bank cause they want <laughs> me to be specific, like doing business in the state that they're in. So I, uh-huh. I went the internet based route and Mercury bank allows you to have 15, up to 15 accounts without okay. any extra approval. If you need some extra ones, you can reach out to to uh, the staff and most likely get approved for more. Um, they are truly fee free, meaning like I send international wires to uh, my VAs in the Philippines every single month, and I pay zero dollars to send money to the Philippines, wow. which is ridiculous. Let me ask you this uh, about yeah. about fee free. I mean. I mean, it's nice, to obviously, not to pay fee uh, fees, but uh, is there another underlying reason why it has to be fee free? Because um, th- those throw off your um, needs in your business. Expenses. So, like, if you it, like, right. it, yeah, it, it's really hard because you're not. We're not in profit first, truly, like accounting to the penny. So, if you have right. like a twenty five dollar or thirty five dollar a month. Um, fee every single Charge, month, right. um, then that's going to throw off things. And then if you have, especially if it's your profit account, which um, yes. by the way, the profit a- account and the savings account or the uh, taxes account, tax yeah. account is uh, supposed to be um, savings and the other ones are checking. Um, okay. And and so okay. if you have a fee associated with your um, with your profit account, even if there's like fees for taking the money out or, you know, yeah. whatever, even like trans, like, you know, transferring limitations or whatever, the amount of transfers mm-hmm. you can do in a month that all that stuff can really impact your system. Cause you have to transfer stuff to other accounts all the time. Um, right. so the other thing I, I think I, um, I didn't mention is making sure that if you have to like, um, get a like just completely f- um fee free so like no cashier check fees like none of that stuff wow so it's hard wow. to find like going to a chase it bank or a u.s bank that you're not gonna it's really rough but um the other the closest one at the next in line to mercury is a bank called north um north one bank and they actually have articles about how to use a profit first system within their bank account. Wow. But they are not a true uh, profit first bank because they charge $10 a month for the, ah, but they're specifically okay. made. They're like a, a pebble as what pebble is to land. They are for like profit first. And oh, wow. It's designed yeah, like, just for profit. I mean, first. they, you can even, I don't think they design it just for profit first, but it, I think that it was heavily influenced because you get, that's the only bank that I know of where you can actually set preset percentages to transfer into different accounts. So I can say, okay, I want 15% in from the income account to go here. Um, and cause there's guidance that he provides called target allocated percentages, um, which taps okay. and caps and stuff. So based on the amount of revenue you make in your business, um, all that stuff. 
So right. yeah, right. eventually, because I have the outline, I will probably come out with the blog post and put it on RA Tipster or somewhere on the internet because it's worthwhile, <laughs> but... So uh, I will yeah. I will make sure to include that in the show notes. Uh, Mercury.com and the other one was North One. I'm assuming it's something like North One.com. Yep, I actually sent um, you the and, URLs in Slack. Hi there. Perfect. Okay, yeah. good. I've got That's that. Good. We'll make sure we'll yeah. we'll put that in the show notes for a few guys. And thank you, Jaron, for doing all that digging. I mean, <laughs> we we have this you know, we have this uh, ability now with Jaron to do all the digging and uh, we're super appreciative of that. So I can't imagine the the amount of time you, I mean, out of all the banks, you, you've narrowed it down to like a, a couple, literally a couple of banks here. So yeah, I mean, um, the, the really, another really one would be, um, uh, goodness, a uh, first internet bank is another good one. They're not a hundred percent fee free with like, cause okay. you, they charge you for wires and stuff, but they're mm. really solid. I, I okay. used them uh, for my personal for a while. Okay. What, what was that? What was that one called again? Uh, First Internet Bank. They're based out of Indiana, okay. of all places. Um, and then now, for, on the personal side, I will say Capital One Three Hundred and Sixty. You can like you have unlimited savings accounts you can set up, so you could do that through wow. Capital One. Yeah. Here it is, guys. These are like literally. Almost, I would say, hacks that uh, 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 Jaron has figured out. So again, we'll include that in the show notes. Now, Jaron, prior to doing, you know, following this whole uh, profit first approach, what 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 do things look? What did things look like? And I'm sure maybe a lot of land investors can relate to this. Uh, can you sort of tell us and yeah. walk us through what that was like? I mean, it's getting pretty vulnerable, but I feel like I'm standing. Well, we don't have to get naked, that deep. You know, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, like it's. Uh, I was, I just really sucked at managing money. I mean, at the end of the day, I made, I'm good at making money, but mm. it's been a learning process um, because they don't teach you it in school. And then a lot of the business books are related to mindset and yes. then a, a strategy as to how you can generate revenue, but they don't actually focus on practical ways right. to manage the revenue and then the right. stuff that is all about personal finance and money management is super boring and it's hard because the subject's just inherently boring probably the best one i've read is uh ramit sethi's um i will teach you how to be rich that one okay, was a yeah. really good book that okay. helped a lot um i would say uh, at the if we want to distill this down to like lowest common denominator I saw a YouTube short that was um, an interview between Kevin Hart, the, the actor, the comedian, Kevin Hart, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Grant Cardone. Okay. And yeah. he was what it was like, you know, the shorts are only like 60 seconds long, but it was extremely profound because Kevin mm. broke down what he does when he gets a big multi-million dollar check from one of the movies he does. And wow. what he, he does is super simple. It's almost kind of profit first like, but just even more dumbed down. He says mm. 50% automatically goes into a tax account that I don't even see. I just, because mm. when you're making that much money, you're at a really high tax rate. And yes. um, he probably has accountants and stuff that will help him get like a nice bonus, like tax bonus back, but sure. he just yeah. cuts it off, puts it out. Yeah. And then yeah. the remaining 50%, he takes 25% and he invests mm. it. In, in mm. primarily in real estate is what he said, which was interesting. And then mm. uh, he, he, the remaining 25% is what he lives on and what he, he plays around with and buys cars with and whatever. So he's living off of 25% of his total revenue. And wow. that system is very, very, very simple. And yep. it really does hit the major things you need to hit. And if you, I mean, if you can make enough where you can live off 25%, and invest 25%, you're good, man. Yeah. Just yeah. keep it simple. You know, it doesn't have to be super complicated. And that's the thing. I think a lot of us now, again, I can't speak for everybody. A lot of us who are in this entrepreneurial space, we're, we're more creative minded, minded. Um, you know, we like to just focus on the business and it's always, I am exactly like you, Jaren. I, I cannot, I get, I get anxiety. My mom, my mom's an accountant. And it gives me anxiety when I talk to her about money stuff or, or accounting related stuff. It just kind of flies over my head. And I like what you said there, you know, keeping things simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. I talk a lot about this in terms of even on the pebble side of things like you can just keep things really simple and, and get really, really far. Um, so I love that. Um, I love pebble. Now, by the way. 
I just want you to know, like, <laughs> I, you know, it is expensive. I mean, I'll be, I'll keep it real. Like, it's it's yeah. expensive. It is an investment, but my goodness, yeah. it has revolutionized my land business and like thousand <laughs> percent. It's like a game changer. It's like I actually have a real business now instead of like a spreadsheet, you know. <laughs> appreciate that. Sure. Um, okay. Now, what, what would you say are, are some of the more common issues others are facing, you know, in, in terms of, you know, uh, managing money and, uh, you know, having to deal with this kind of stuff? You've, you've coached, uh, you know, a, a lot of people and helped a lot of land investors. What do you typically see? So like you just said, entrepreneurs are not wired to be accountants. Like yeah. our personality profile is generally speaking, much more like, I'm going to just go after things and, you know, kind of <laughs> like a shotgun blasting, but somehow it all comes together and we end up making money for us <laughs> and a bunch of people. Like, but it's all fly. It's just like all fly by night, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I see a lot of people go into this business, not yeah. running numbers, Cause they don't know. I mean, you hear on a podcast or you hear even at like a, a real estate meetup. Yeah. We bought this property for a hundred thousand dollars and we sold it for 250,000, but you don't, you know, you didn't hear about the fact that, you know, they had 255,000 in, in a uh, cost. Right. So they are negative $5,000. Like, and a lot of people tote around their deal count and like, Oh yeah, I'm doing big stuff. You know, I'm a, amazing and whatever, like bunch of ego in real estate. And they'll, they'll come in to be rubbing it in your nose, but then behind closed doors, they're like freaking out because they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know? And I was the same way. And I see that over and over again. So they don't factor in things like, oh, okay. Like when I do a deal, I actually need yeah. to, just because I have revenue, that doesn't mean that I can spend that. Right. I have to reimburse acquisition. I have to reimburse direct mail. I have to reimburse, mm -hmm. you know, um, due diligence costs. And then any, if there's anything left over, that's what that's is right. profit, you know? Right, right. Um, Jaren, you know, there, there's a lot to this whole profit first, it sounds like. And, and, you know, you've gone down that rabbit hole. But if somebody is like, is interested in, in, in learning more, obviously they can pick up the book. Um, but yeah, it, I actually have it here. I don't know if you saw. I was waving yeah. it on the camera. Oh, were you? Okay, no, I was looking at my notes. Okay, you got it there. I was going to drink Profit my coffee up here. Real estate investing, yeah. Transform your real estate investing business from a cash eating monster to a money making machine by David Richter. Yeah, and if you um, haven't or haven't listened to that episode with uh, David, make sure you check that out. That was episode number sixty. Now, if you were to give three baby steps for someone to get started here. Yeah. To, so to move in this direction, other than checking out the book, what would those baby steps be? Well, so I, I do want to say if you're in a position where you're more established in your business and you can afford it, I would consider reaching out to David's company, Simple CFO, because they are essentially like a fractional CFO. So they're like a, almost an extension of your team where they'll do mm. all the CFO related work mm. and projections. They'll get your books clean and like go through profit first, but then eventually they're in the like proactive stuff, like helping you set up your structure, your entity and all this stuff. And, um, yeah. okay. and they are, you know, a tip, a real life CFO for your company is going to be six figures a year, like bare minimum, but they're like, yeah. I think 2,500 to like 3,500 a month, depending on the size of your business. So, um, okay. Like that's, a, that's definitely something that's not something to sneeze at, but it's kind of like a part-time salary. Right. So right, and if you're right, in a position right. where you can bring on an expert like that, I don't know of anybody who's better at managing money for real estate investors than their team. Um, gotcha. my best friend, uh, I have two best friends. One of them actually works for, uh, works for David. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Randomly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I think that that is something to definitely consider, but um, mm -hmm. learning the book and then here's what Mike Michalowicz would say, um, distilling it not even three steps, just down to one. He yeah. would say, go open up an account right now and yeah. call it profit. Don't, yeah. don't worry about the bank. Don't worry about the fees. Don't worry about anything. Just go open a yeah. bank, uh, a, a new bank account, call it profit and then put a dollar yeah. in it. Because now, for the first time in your business, you just went from 
just everything that comes in goes right back out into the business. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, you're not telling your dollars to do anything. All of a sudden now mm -hmm. you're a dollar profit, but, um, a dollar profitable. Like, so you're profitable mm -hmm. a dollar. There you go. If I can speak English properly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're, you're I, I, a dollar profitable. And even though that seems super simple and a mm -hmm. major baby set, baby step, the reality yeah. is you going through that process, something's going to switch in your brain where you're like, Oh, wait a second. This is what it looks like to, yeah. to have the, to run a business is like when the money's here, if I want to actually yeah. be profitable. Or I actually want to keep yeah. some of this. I have to manage it. I have to put it away and tell it to do stuff. Yeah. 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 And it's funny. I think this is, this is sort of a, a bit of a domino effect mind shift. It changes a lot of things, how you approach your, you know, your expenses, how you approach a lot of different things, even including your own personal life as, as well. So um, I encourage you guys uh, to do check out the books. Um, and we'll have those in, in our show notes as well. Um, Jaren, thanks. Thanks again for coming on here to share your experiences uh, with with Profit First and how you're you're handling it within your business and uh, how others can handle it within their business. Now, before I wrap this up, we do I do want to make uh, a bit of a special an announcement here, um, and this is a, sort of the first time, and I want to talk a little bit about this. Um, Jaron is, is has been uh, has been gracious enough to sort of join us on on the coaching side of things. Uh, we don't actually have any coaching uh, inside of Pebble. We've always done a lot of free content uh, like our, our podcasts and we have classroom series, which Jaren's going to be joining us with that uh, on that as well uh, eventually here. But Jaren, um, we put together uh, a curriculum here for uh, Land Investor and we're calling it your, your first deal. It's actually, if you want to check it out, if you head over to reiconversion.com slash your first deal, um, Jaren, can you talk us a little uh, talk, talk us through a little bit about this uh, uh, um, pr program? Yeah, so I thought long and hard about how to structure this. Yeah. So this is what I'm pretty much saying with a, a slight caveat. I am willing within this program to take anybody by the hand and walk them systematically through the entire process, literally processing leads, finding a land specialized real estate agent, setting up their Pebble workflow, all that stuff um, until they, and at unlimited sessions almost, and that's where the caveat's going to come, until they actually take title to a prof property and have it listed with a land specialized agent. Um, that's, and I, I actually am super passionate about um, wanting to get people over that hump because yeah. I think that's where really a lot of people fall to the wayside. They get like some, yeah. you know, like they'll get a hodgepodge education, grabbing little from here, little from there. And, and then there's yeah. just a bunch of gaping holes everywhere. And then they're yeah. frustrated because they've spent money on a campaign and they didn't get anything to show for it. And it's like, Hey, are all these guys liars? It's like, no, it's just, you know, there's certain tricks of the trade that uh, yeah. you, they don't share. Right. Well, I want to yep. teach you those tricks of the trade and I want to set up they literally what I do for coaching clients is if they um, come through, I'll actually log into their Pebble account and I'll set up their like Pebble and do everything. Essentially, we carbon copy my business model and mm -hmm. um, yep. and um, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat um, and land is just like that as well. So I just kind of like distill it down and say, okay, let's avoid, you know, information overload paralysis by analysis and just yes. give you the bare minimum of what you need step-by-step step in order. So not yeah. giving it to you before you need it um, all the way yeah. to you actually getting a deal. So I'm going to commit and I'm going to like, even on, I'm working on my, uh, my website stuff actually right now too. And mm -hmm. I'm going to commit to unlimited quote unquote sessions um, but the big caveat is um, who I'm coaching has to be showing up to meetings and proactive and actually taking action steps. Um, yeah. If I yeah. see that they're not, then we'll just cut the program off. But, yeah. um, you know, I'm actually going to be holding people by the hand. Um, and on that, Jesse, um, yeah. for people who are listening, for the first 10 people that sign up, we're actually going to be giving a pretty major discount. So. Um, yes. Uh, so I think typically it runs forty five hundred dollars. 
but yep. we're going to, we're going to give a $1,500 discount off. So that, that's huge. And I, I think, um, you know, I, I just had an, a couple that came onto the podcast. It's, it's been recorded and it, it, it's always that first deal getting through that first deal and not just by luck. I mean, actually strategically and methodically going through that first deal plants the seed for you to then get momentum. And this is what happened exactly. Um, well, I spoke, I spoke to his Ariane and, um, uh, David, uh, but uh, that, that's exactly, I mean, it took them so long to finally get to their first deal. And once you get that momentum on that first deal, it, it just hap- it starts clicking and happening. And this is what this program is all about. Um, a lot of people came to us and said that, you know, they, they, they want to get started. They're not sure how to get started. They went through some course and training, but it didn't really give them enough hands-on, uh, you know, land, landscape of land constantly changes. Um, and this is what it's all about. Jaron is going to get in the weeds with you. Um, we're also including uh, three months free of uh, Pebble access too, and uh, that'll be included uh, in this training as well. And, and like, like Jaron said, he will basically implement things for you inside of your Pebble account, which is huge. I know a lot of people, um, you know, that, that sort of scares them to get in, in, inside of a system or get involved with the system. But really, I mean, these systems, processes, you know, methods is what's going to be able to help you grow a business, you know, put processes in place. Either you're going to buy back time for yourself or grow that business. So I'm really excited. If you head over to reiconversion.com, your first deal, um, as Jaron said, the first 10 people will get a hefty discount. Uh, you'll be able to apply there um, and you're going to book a call with Jaron. You'll, you'll, you'll get his calendar on there. Um, you can check out some of the video testimonials on there. Um, j- just to name a couple of people we had, Kevin, um, my, my co-founding partner here, um, he went through coaching with uh, uh, Jaron. Um, also, uh, Lucas, um, I, I talked I talked with him on episode number fifty one. In fact, have a listen to that 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 episode is pretty cool because um, uh, he was able to increase his response rate on his mailer. But he also uh, worked with uh, Jaron. He came from multifamily homes, moved over to uh, work working in land, and he scaled up very quickly. And in, that was like month ten. Uh, of him in land and he was already like hands hands all on deck for for land so jaron i'm really excited so if you guys want to check it out head over to reiconversion.com slash your first deal it doesn't matter if you're new or experienced um if you want someone to go through uh and and get that first deal un- under the belt um in a methodical and processified i don't even know if that's a word. i always say that word in, a, in that kind of a way make sure you reach out to jaron other than that, Jaron, um, thank you once again for coming on this episode. Is there anything else I missed here? No, I think that's it. I'm really excited. You know, I, it's um, what the land business provides is unreal. Like it is when I tell people what a normal deal looks like, people think I'm lying and I'm like a charlatan <laughs> trying to, you know, sell snake oil sales stuff. Kind of <laughs> you know, like it's it's yeah. horrible. So like, I'm telling you that if you guys take action on this and for the price and what you're getting, the fact that you're getting Pebble, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, say anything hype, hyperbolic statements, you know, I don't want to go down that route, but I really do think that this thing can change your life because I, you get to leverage five ish years of me being in the land business in like what a month, two months and you'll get your first deal. We we actually had a couple people who went through this, and I, I tell them like you know, but pretty much this course pays for itself. Um, it really does, literally. I mean, you're you're, <laughs> you're getting a land deal done. Uh, you're getting uh, you know access into Pebble. I I I can't think of a, a of a sweeter deal. I mean, the education yeah. pays off for itself. So and Jaren's yeah. walking you through. That. And I'm not I'm not gonna like, cap it on any sessions. I mean, as long as you're showing up, like we're gonna walk yeah. you through as many sessions as it takes to your first deal. Awesome. Jaron, I'm looking very forward to it. Uh, thank you very much for coming onto the show, sharing uh, your, uh, again, uh, your approach to uh, profit first and um, excited to, to uh, introduce the, uh, your first, what I call first deal, your first deal, sorry, <laughs> uh, reiconversion.com slash your first deal coaching with Jaron here uh, at REI Conversion. But anyways, thank you very much again, Jaron. Yeah, man. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Before you stop this podcast or head to the next episode, I want to personally thank you for listening to this episode of the REI Conversion Podcast. 
If you found this helpful, we greatly appreciate an awesome review and rating on whichever platform you're listening to this on. And if you have two minutes and wanted to step it up even more and help others, feel free to share this in other Facebook groups or pages or any communities giving others a heads up of the REI Conversion Podcast or this specific episode that may help them on their investing journey. Once again, thanks very much for listening and catch you on our next episode.